Well, good day, folks. Quick update after the Fed interest rate announcement. No change. And then Jerome Powell coming out rather dovish, I would say, and even hinting at potential interest rate drops, declines, decreases, cuts. In other words, pivotal talk. And that affected the markets quite dramatically, including a rally across the board on the euro and the pound and gold and stock markets and so on and some sort of smallish movements in natural gas and a couple of other commodities. So I'm not going to take too long in this video. I just want to point out what's going on across the board. We'll start from the left to the right and how we view going into the next week or two on currencies and stocks and commodities. So we've just taken profit on our euro trade and we've got to sort of halfway up through this decline, this recent decline, up to about this resistance level over here. I'm wondering if we might see the dollar strengthen a wee bit today and going into the rest of the week, which will push the euro and the pound down. So we've exited our long trade on the euro and just waiting to see what happens. We have no position on the pound. And dollar yen, in addition to the 130 odd pips we took on the euro, we also took about 430 pips profit on the dollar yen. Added to the other 500 or so that we took last week. So it's been a fantastic trade on this dollar yen after fiddling around at this top for so long. Now we've closed all of our dollar yen trades just waiting for a bounce and I'll tell you why I think we might get a bounce on the dollar. First of all, I think there's just a bit of over exuberance on Powell's seemingly dovish talk. It was dovish, but he didn't really say an awful lot different to what he's been saying all along and he still left room open for interest rate hikes, however unlikely that might be. On all of that news, the dollar dropped sharply down to the support level. You can see I've got it at about 102.50. And this is a pretty key support. If I get rid of that Fibonacci and replace it with one from the bottom to the top, like this, you can see that not only is it an important level that we're at at the moment, but it's also the 61.8% Fibonacci level. So we've retraced 61.8% of this rally from the bottom to top. That's where we are at the moment. So not only is it a key support level, potentially a double bottom. I don't know what's going to happen here, but it's also the 61.8% Fib. Whilst we're on this chart and talking about the dollar, I want to switch across to the 10 year yield and have a look at what this is doing because this is equally important. We've dropped down to the big round number at 4%, just below at about 3.95 a massive drop over the last two days below the 200 day moving average. But we're down to this key red line support level and it also happens to be the 61.8% Fibonacci on this chart too. I'd be very surprised if we didn't get a bit of a bounce here, perhaps back up to this trend line. Let's zoom this out a bit on the day chart and perhaps go to the four hour chart for a closer look. So here's the four hour chart on the US 10 year yield. And look where we've got to. Massive move down yesterday and we've got down to that red line and this Fibonacci level. And just looking at this daily trend line, it's not quite accurate on the four hour, but it's good enough. And we'd be looking for pullbacks to this swing low here at around about 4.11 and perhaps even up to this trend line as it comes down. You can see where the moving averages are. And that's how it looks on the day chart. So we're just below the 200 period moving average, but we do pierce it sometimes, so I'm not too worried about that. As I said earlier, I'd be very surprised if we didn't get a bounce from around about 3.95 where we are at the moment to about 4.1, and perhaps slightly higher up to the underneath of this trend line. So we'll keep an eye on that and the dollar index for these to bounce off current support to move up into resistance, and then we'll be looking to resell dollar yen and buy euros and pounds again. So some fantastic trading on those currencies and we're out of all currencies now. So I'm going to go straight across to stocks. Now we've talked about the 10 year yield and the dollar and if those do bounce, I think we should see some pullback in stocks. What's interesting about NASDAQ, and I'm just going to look at this for today, this is the day chart. We've got the megaphone top above us. Remember that's always present. That's about 17,145 currently. Keep that number in mind, just above 17,000 before another pullback. But we are already currently short on NASDAQ. If we go to the weekly chart, you can see we're just touching very, very, very close to these all-time highs. In fact, we're touching the wick of the second highest high. So are we going to tag the all-time high? and perhaps move higher up to the top of this megaphone, or are we gonna fail here? A lot depends on the dollar and the 10 year yield, and we'll be watching all of this very closely. We do, as I said, have a short position on NASDAQ now, but that may well be stopped out, and we may have to look to resell at around about 17,200. Mark that number down in your notebooks. I'm not gonna cover anything else at the moment on stocks. It all depends on whether we're gonna reach up to those all time highs on NASDAQ, whether we're gonna pierce those levels to above 17,000 and the top of the megaphone, or whether we can see the dollar index and the 10 year yield rise and bounce off current levels. Right, going across the metals, we're long on URA, nothing to say on that. I think that's just gonna carry on edging higher. We, don't, we have nothing on copper, we have nothing on silver. We do have a long position on gold from near these lows, but we've taken 50% off in profit at the underside of this channel line. It's a natural resistance area. And you can see there are several resistance points at around about this current level. So we've taken 50% profit. We've moved our stops to break even way down at the bottom here. And we're going to give this a chance to run up to the recent highs at 2135. 
and perhaps even higher. I really like the longer term picture on gold. Have a look at some of my previous videos and go and have a look at my X channel where you can see some of my tweets showing the longer term picture on gold. And if you don't want to miss future videos on this channel, consider subscribing. Just press the subscribe button below. It's completely free. Or you can become a member of this YouTube channel by pressing the join button below and you'll get access to some of the other benefits that the general public doesn't get access to. So a fantastic trade so far on gold. Brilliant trades on the dollar yen and the euro. NASDAQ were a bit underwater but waiting to see what happens. We've talked about the 10 year. We also went short on Bitcoin near these highs. Anyone in my private group will have followed that trade. You'll know our entry price and our target is to fill this gap down here in the 38,000s. We're long on VIX and if the dollar does rally and the stock market turns around a bit we should see some bounce on VIX and I'm happy with that position. We have nothing on wheat. I'll be looking to buy wheat later on. Have a look at my X feed for some comments on wheat. We have nothing on oil and then natural gas. Of course, we're long on natural gas. I've detailed my trade on this in previous videos and on X. So go and have a look at those. But this is just beginning to edge up from the channel bottom. So far, so good. I want to close this four hour gap here on the four hour chart. This is the weekend gap. And if we can get up through there and close above there and particularly above this level at about 2.6, we should be on our way to test the top of the channel again and then eventually move back up to these recent highs at around about 3.65. If you want more detail on the natural gas trade, have a look at the video, the link to which I'll post at the end of this one. So that's it folks. And basically what it all boils down to is what this 10 year yield is going to do and consequently the dollar index. And as I said, we're at super key support now, the 618 Fib, just below the 200 period moving average. And I'd be very, very surprised if we didn't get some sort of recovery on this quite soon. It's also a big round number at 4%. Take care, have a great trading day. I'll speak to you soon.